Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. If y'all don't mind standing up just, just as we enter into uh, worship, amen. There's a song that I heard over the week, and I just wanted to say some of the, the words of it. Uh, it was the blessing. And it starts out, the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards us and give us peace. Let's go ahead and go before the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. God, we know it's only because of you, Father, that many who did not make it, but God, we're here. And so, Father, we come to give you glory. Father, we thank you that, Lord, you've been with us. And no matter what we've gone through, God, your face has shined upon us. Yeah. And God, we thank you that even in the storm, Lord, that you're present and that you are there. So, Father, we just ask that we could use the energy that we have to worship you today. Yeah. That we might say hallelujah and say, thank you, Jesus. Glory. For you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are the great I am. And there is nothing too hard for you. So, Father, we ask, God, that you come into this place. God, there's still sick among us. God, there's still those that are hurting, God. And Father, we pray for help. God, help us to be a vessel that will speak your truth, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, for everyone who's operating in ministry right now here at Philadelphia Baptist Church. We thank you for those that are on their way, God. And we thank you for those that are faithfully here. We ask that your spirit rest in this place. God, that you move like you want to move, God. We release you to have your way in this place. Father, we put our will on the altar, God, and we ask you to give us your will, God, that we might do what you would want us to do. Father, we ask you to bless the musicians, the singers, the greeters, all that are working, God, and we most of all ask you to bless the man of God who will provide the word, the rhema, God. And Father, we just give your name glory, God. We, we give your name glory, God. We give your name glory. Say hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 
God. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to worship him in spirit and in truth this morning. If you can help us sing it, say, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Lord the mighty, 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 Lord the mighty. Oh Lord, how excellent is the name in all the Lord, you're 
serve a mighty God. The Lord God that we serve, he is a mighty God. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. He is greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. We love you today, God. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but if it had not been for God in my life, oh, yeah. and because of that, I promise I'm never going back. Those things that I used to do, the person that I used to be, I don't know if that's anybody else's testimony, but I stand before you today. I make it known, amen? Lord God, I thank you for everything that you brought me out of. And because I'm so thankful, I'm so grateful, I can't go back. No matter how it may look, I might get a little weak sometimes and think, you know what? I miss that. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. I know how much he loves me. I know the sacrifice. Well, really, I don't know. I can only imagine everything that Jesus endured on that cross, not just for me, but for you. For me, when I wasn't even thinking about him. Oh, God, I thank you.
Come on, if you know you're never going back. Give God all the praise. Yes. Hallelujah. God, I won't go back. I can't go back. Good morning. Good morning. The Lord has done great things for us. We are, we are glad. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. We thank God for those that are here. We just uh, want to ask if there are any first time visitors in the house this morning. And don't look like I see any. But thank God you are here. Amen. Uh, so you can, at this time can just uh, greet the person next to you, uh, speak to them if, if they want to speak back, if they don't want to speak, uh, uh, you know, just uh, wave at them or tell them glad to see you today and the Lord has blessed us to be here in the house. So uh, we are going to just proceed on and uh, we thank you for being here. Uh, and no further things occurring and we are going to ask for that second selection coming to us from the praise team and uh, let's get them a hand as they come back to us.
Thank you today for this time of learning, this time of sharing, and send your word today. Help your word to fall on sensitive ears that they will hear the word and become doers of the word and not hearers only. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And we are coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Um, and I'm going to just use for a subject title today we all have a role to play you may be seated as we are going to go through this uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We honor God today and our pastor in his absence and he is the pastor of this church and I want to make sure I honor him and thank God for his wife and his family that are here. I thank God for blessing me with my wife of 40 40 some years <laughs> amen. amen but I want you to know we are yet in love and uh, we rode in the same car this morning so uh, we are in love and I'm here to render the word to you and uh, we're going to have a word uh, those uh, that are going to go to the uh, 
youth class upstairs or wherever we are going to allow you the opportunity to be excused at this time and we are going to go on with the word. Amen. I'm too old to go up there. It's a blessing when you can uh, come to God's house and be fed. So uh, we are talking about going the extra mile and passionately seeking after God. So coming to you from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, Paul opens up and says that he could not speak to this group of spiritual men, but as men of flesh, as to babes in Christ. Um, and we came today to uh, hear about God's word. Many times when we are listening to the word of God today, it starts off with a verse out of the scripture and then it ends up in maybe another avenue. But uh, he said, I gave you milk to drink, not solid food, for you were not yet able to receive it. Indeed, even now, you are not yet able. So, uh, the first point I have today is get the right diet. Get the right diet. You know, you are what you eat. Uh, and when you hear the word of God, God speaks to you. Uh, and when we hear God's word, what do we do? We supposed to become what? Doers of the word and not hearers only. Yeah, a lot of people can quote the scripture, but they can't live the scripture. Uh, and so we have to make sure we get the right diet. Uh, Get the right diet. Um, a lot of times I wake up in the morning and uh, if I'm not eating the right thing, I don't feel so good. And I want to come to you today with some spiritual alcohol to get you clean out and clean up so that you can be able to process God's word. Amen. Sometimes we can't digest the word because we're not hearing God's word clearly. Uh, and so sometimes when we hear God's word, God is speaking directly to us. And we want to say, I sure wish so-and-so was here today, but uh, they will hear this word. But we want to uh, just expound on God's word and those that hear, hear, those that don't hear. Uh, and if somebody gets out of line with you this week, ask them, did you hear that message that I heard Sunday? And they might be able to go back and check and see what kind of diet they're on. Because uh, when we wake up in the morning, we should always give God thanks Thank you for another day that you blessed us to see. Oh, it, it, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? And, and it's so we so take so many times for granted uh, how God uh, blesses us to go home, go out, come back, go in, go out. Uh, the Lord has protected me many times over the dangerous highways and byways. 
Uh, I'm not that good a driver, but uh, you can be the best driver in the world and lose your life. Because if it wasn't for God's grace and God's mercy, we wouldn't be able to survive. Um, and so we want to, number two, minimize divisions. That's when uh, it's a click over here, it's a click right there, and another click over here. You all understand what I'm talking about? When uh, I was in high school, a little group get over here, another little group get over there, another little group get over there, and you try to walk up, and then they stop talking. That means that you are not welcome. Uh, so we want to minimize divisions. If uh, uh, one group is doing something at the church, that means everybody participate. Now, if it's a women's group, you don't plan to see me because I'm a man. If the men are having something, I'm not expecting uh, my wife to try to get in the car with me to go to uh, go to that event because uh, we love each other, but sometimes we have to separate. So I can go to work. She can go to work. I'm not calling her every five minutes, what you doing? I mean, it's amazing that some women have uh, their sense because their husband has such a tight line on them. And then he's checking the cell phone to see what side of town they own and this and that. Uh, when you're in love, love covers a multitude of faults. Love covers a multitude of sin. Love covers a multitude of everything that's going on. When you have, you know, many times you've gone home and you did, things might not have been just right. You have to learn how to keep your mouth closed. Do what you're supposed to do. I hear some of y'all laughing and chuckling because... I'm speaking real. See, a lot of us act like we come home, praise the Lord, thank you, and everything is just lovely, hunky-dory. Life is not really like that. Sometimes you come in and there's turbulence in the house. And you have to go in and sort of, you know, calm everything down. And the devil tell you, say, go ahead and get involved. And you create a mess. So we want to minimize divisions. If uh, uh, one group is having an event and it, the announcement is made, they don't have to send me a special invitation because I'm a member. If you're a member of the church, then you should be able to participate in everything that's going on. A lot of us want to only participate in the executive details. Uh, we won't do anything, but we just want to know. Uh, when uh, the men say, well, we're going to have an event this weekend, we're going to do some cleaning up around the church. And the calls start coming in. <clears throat> oh, my, I, I'm a little bit under the weather. Uh, God will prepare you if you have good intentions. Hello. Y'all got to talk to me this morning. Don't be afraid to get your hands involved in God's work. God's people are just, we just special. We don't operate like some people do. We are very obedient. Was I speaking to the wrong crowd? 
Amen. Uh, number three, perform your duty. What is your duty? What is your duty? You say, my job is just come and sit, sit here and look. <laughs> the only one I'm looking at sitting around in here is probably Deacon Cannon might get that look passed. Because he's put in his time. And then he gets to church before some of us. Amen. 90 years old. Amen. Here a lot of us come in about 1030. Here we come. Usher open the door. Greeter open the door. Good morning. What's good about it? We have come to the Lord's house and we came to praise his name. We came to lift up his name. We came to magnify his name. Uh, so that leads me to the point, the relationship of the workers. We got to learn how to work with different people. I know how to work with my wife. When she tells me to do something, I get it done. I didn't hear too much on that. When my, I ask my wife to do something, she'll, she'll try to do it because she loves me. You shouldn't have been with the person if you don't love them. When you love somebody, you got to be in you got to break, you got to stand, you got to do things you didn't intend to do. And my wife said, can you get that over there for me? I'm just like this. Well, I, I get it after a while. We got to learn how to get along with our wife. We got to learn how to get along with our husband. Nice to everybody else on the job. Just, hey, hey, Jim. Get home. Your husband say, how you doing? <sighs> Don't say nothing to me. Relationship. How do you get along with your children? Your children telling you what to do. Get out of here. Get out of here. I'm from old school on that. God put the parent in charge. Amen. I'm not saying I'm a dictator, but I'm close to it. <laughs> if I ask you to carry that trash out and I go outside and come back an hour or two later, it's still sitting there, that sends me into a frenzy. <laughs> because I ask you. Now, I didn't say I went over there with my fists and banging on you and beating you. But, you know, we have an agreement here. I clean up this room. I clean up my room. I expect you to clean up your room. It's so sad when a parent can't get their child to clean up their room. And I hear some of y'all right now say, I, I sure hope my child on here because they've been telling me what to do. You want, it's the parent. It's like these school systems. You, you, you can't tell a child to do anything. They come to class. They not feeling it that day. What's the answer to this? I don't know. Well, you keep on saying, I don't know. At the end of the semester, when you get that F, you'll know what's, what went on. 
But a lot of us, we can't even get a child in F anymore. Because we got to fight their parent. We got to fight the school system. We got to fight the state, the federal government. Give them an F. If they don't do the work, give them an F. And see, they changed the schedule now. Oh, you can't give an F anymore. Child come to school all semester, won't obey anybody. And that's why the church now is so difficult to run. Brother, would you uh, meet us here Wednesday night? No, I ain't coming. But I, I love respect. I love to respect you. I expect you to respect me. Different workers serve different functions. Everybody has a different job to do. I, and, and I saw the greeters out there on point this morning. And, and you know, everybody's in their place trying to greet. But some people decided today I'm not going to make it. So you just have to keep going. Keep going. Every Sunday, you in your place. God going to send some people in here that want to have a relationship with the Lord. Because it's so easy when the pastor asks you to do something. Why, why did you come to the church? You don't want to obey anybody? And that's a bad word now in our society. I don't have a problem obeying whoever I'm working with. And I use the wrong word, work. Because a lot of people don't work anymore. <laughs> Amen. They, they, they got that credit card and they'll flash it on you right quick. Say, I want you to clean up my yard, take care of all that. You get ready to get paid. Uh, just leave the bill. I take care of it. And you fool around and leave that place. You got to come back with the Johnny Cochran firm, <laughs> Ted Nugent, just to get your money. That shouldn't be named among Christians. Your word is your bond. One thing about it, different workers are of equal value. Some of us up here, some of us down here, but we have equal value. All of us have to eat. All of us have to, I hope, take a bath. Anybody in here don't have to take a bath? Or spray or something, you know, you got to you got to put some water on yourself. Amen. Cause sometimes the older I get, the more I have to work on my body. Just jumping and shouting and going on and and then come back to try to sit next to the person, they try to ease over. Because you admitting an odor. So, no matter if you uh, been in the church for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, the person that just came in that door last week or today, they are the same value in God's eyesight. Different workers are not rivals. They are one in purpose. I remember the words of my mother. She said, whenever you do something, do it good. Because in the church, you have what you call toppers. You know what a topper is? 
You have your lawn cut, put a little statue out there. Top will come by and put one up this high. You have one behind here, a top will say, I need one over here, and I need one over there. You can't do anything with a topper. You just have to do what you do and live your life because some people just can't be satisfied with being who they are. Workers are distinct in their responsibilities. I don't know why when you start doing something, everybody want to come help. But the Lord didn't put nothing in your mind. Did the Lord put anything in your heart to, to do this, to do that? If you got an assignment, that's why it's important. When you are nice to people, that should come back to you. Sometimes it doesn't. Don't worry about it. Some people just born hard-headed. They can't help themselves. Their parents tried to straighten them out. They couldn't do it. The Lord's still working on them. And the devil, the only one can make them work. Very distinct. Uh, Brother Sterling on the keyboard. What I look like going over there getting on the keyboard in this church time? He's standing there trying to get on it, and I won't move. He has a distinct job, duty. To perform. The praise team just got through. They have a distinct thing to do. And then, what do you want to do? Oh, I, I, I just don't know. I don't know. But as soon as somebody starts doing something, you want to go take over what they're doing. No. Workers are distinct in their responsibilities as well as in their rewards. You know, God going to pay us for everything that we are doing. Everything that you are doing. God saw you this morning when you got up, you, you came, overcame the obstacles, you got to church. Now, since you're here, you may as well serve the Lord. You may as well be happy. Let me see you wave your hand. Make sure everybody in here breathing. So, whenever uh, you get ready to do some work, number two, the requirements for the workers. The requirements for the workers. Uh, the church is the only place where you don't have to have any requirements to do everything. But if I go in to a, get a job interview, they're going to ask me, what are your requirements? I mean, what are, what are your uh, qualifications? Did you finish high school? I mean, if you didn't, you just didn't. You have to put the X down. Because I remember working at the steel mill when I was in high school, and the guy brought his check up to the teller. He put an X on it. That's what people used to do that could not sign their name. Now the educational system is not even requiring you to be able to do cursor. So as a parent, you have to teach your child how to write their, sign their name. Uh, you go somewhere and you don't know how to sign your name, they're going to say, well, sir, can you just put an X there? <laughs> y'all don't remember that. I, I, I see y'all laughing at me. <laughs> but a lot of people had to put the X down. Yeah. So uh, 
whatever you do for the Lord, God will pay you. I will guarantee you uh, for when one says, I am a Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not mere men? It doesn't matter where you came from, what you're doing, but you know, if they are not speaking the truth, you need to get out of there. God is going to pay everyone for the work in which you do. And God has already laid that foundation. And if anyone comes and builds upon the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each person's work will become evident for the day will show it because it is to be revealed with fire, and the fire itself will test the quality of each person's work. See, you might think you have it going on, but when you put some heat on something, the heat brings sometime out the worst in us, sometimes bring out the best in us. Know who dwells in you. Is it the Lord dwelling in you, or is it the, the devil? And sometimes, you know, you're dealing with people, and then they, the devil comes out of them. And I identify the devil. When I see the devil, I just have to identify it because, you know, uh, a saint of God is not going to act any kind of way. So easy to get along with. I pay you Tuesday. They will hunt you down to give you your money. But if a person not good and saved, they might try to hide from you. I pay you Tuesday. I ask specifically now, which Tuesday? Because uh, that was on Popeye years ago when uh, he said, I will gladly pay you for a hamburger today. See, uh, don't fall into the trap of deception. You know, whenever I've, I sense a person lying to me, I stop listening. I stop listening. I mean, don't y'all think that I think you lying because I turned my head and walking away now. But you, a, a, a person that's not up to good intentions, they won't tell you the truth. Will you be here tomorrow? I'll be right here. You, I need $40. You give them that $40, when you come back in the morning, you so disappointed. They're not going to be there. They already have what they asked for. Don't fall into the trap of deception. Many people look good. They dressed up. But can you believe what they say? We want to become a blessed disciple of Christ. When we demonstrate Christian behavior, God will bless our life. Even if sometimes it's difficult. I, I can tell people, uh, sir, I don't have uh, all of your money, but here's 50 on it and I'll give you the other 50 here. That's the way you used to work. But now people won't, they don't, they don't trust you to say, uh-uh, no. They want it all now. And that credit card, see, it eliminated. You going back there in the cookie jar and all that, getting money. Get that credit card, 
stick it in that machine, it's gone. If it's not there, signal come up. Not valid. So we want to play the role that God has given us. If God asks you to be a witness and he puts people in front of you, God expects you to witness. All you have to do is tell them about your story, how God picked you up, how God changed your life, how God made you so now I can go home and go to sleep. I might owe somebody, but I sure can go to sleep. I can go to sleep. When you're up walking the floor all night, that's not going to help you. You're going to be tired, and then you have to deal with the next day. As we stand, is there one that will come? If you, God has spoken to you today to change your life, you can come right here and merely change your life. God has something for you to do and you're not going to get any peace until you do what God asks you to do. Is there one that will come? You can come. If not, we're going to pray for you right where you are. Dear God, we thank you for those that have heard the word. Help us to demonstrate the word in our lives and in our hearts. And Lord, change our mind, change our thought process, change our being. That we will walk upright, we will speak the truth in your name. And keep us seeking after you more and more each day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to get our offering now. The Lord has blessed you. Now, uh, we are standing as we get ready to uh, bring the gifts that the Lord has blessed us with. Um, you know, we can give uh, online. Uh, we give differently than we did just five years ago. Uh, we have somebody say, everyone with legs stand up. And hopefully you could stand. But if you couldn't, you just had to stay there. But uh, we're going to pray the prayer of faith over you. Dear God, we thank you for this time of bringing our gifts to you. Bless them. Let it go a long way be used for the edification of this ministry. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Will you come on?
thank you so much. Um, if, if you will, <clears throat> I need uh, perfect quietness for this, these announcements right here. The community outreach ministry will not, will not meet today after morning worship. There will be a church business meeting for members on this Friday, July 15th at the church at 7.30 p.m. Please plan to attend if you can. On Saturday, July 23rd, we will have our guest services meeting training for all greeters along with the children and youth greeting on Sunday, July 24th at the church at 9 a.m. And mark your calendar, there will be a Marriage Connection Fellowship on Saturday, July 30th. More details to follow. Uh, if you are uh, here, uh, the, the Friday is the 15th, I believe. Uh, the business meeting for the members at this church is 730, 730, 730. Friday, Friday, amen. Thank you all so much. We are standing. Lord, be with us as we leave this place. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for bringing those that came. Bless them that came. And Lord, bless our leader as he's away. Protect him, bring him back at the appointed time. And may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest rule in the Bible for us henceforth and forevermore. Let the church say amen.